Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, episode 50, the HTC One and Tech 21. This episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Well, this is the Wireless Weekly, the uh, show where we talk about uh, mobile updates, innovations, and just general tech news uh, that re- relate to, well, I like guess phones. Um, my name is Tony Hannity's. And I am Sean Wilburn. And uh, you, you you are you. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Sean, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing well, man. I just like how we did that first. Just so everybody knows, it took us 10 minutes to set up that intro. Yeah. It took us a long time to get that right. We kept bouncing back and forth. We couldn't get that. I kept calling myself Sean Wilburn. It was weird. Yeah, and I kept calling myself not me. I... I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> well, we, we got it right to to a certain degree, but yeah, uh, we did, yeah. Dude. gotta believe in ourselves. Like I believe. I in know, the right? I believe. I believe. In golden Golden State. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, for those of you that want to get in contact with us, you can always email us or call us at seven zero seven seven two two five two nine nine or as I mentioned, email at comments at lazytechguys.com. We are right now live on our YouTube channel, which is Lazy Tech TV, so make sure that you are watching every Tuesday night in or around about 10.30. So we were three minutes late Pacific Standard Time, but hey, we're here now, and uh, let's get into tech news. So uh, we have a couple of, uh, I guess, exclusives. I got a chance to check out the HTC Boom Sound Room or Boom Sound Lounge in San Francisco. <laughs> Um, also, had a chance to talk to one of the executives from Tech 21. They manufacture some of the high-end impactology cases that you'll find in T-Mobile locations as well as Apple stores. And other top mobile headlines include uh, Xiaomi uh, plans for uh, U.S. expansion, Jola, which is a spinoff from Nokia, is going to be launching and announcing a new phone next month. LinkedIn. By his pulse. And Sean doesn't seem too happy about that. No, no. And a couple of changes with Verizon Wireless. And finally, we get official specs for the Google, well, the Google Glass. Yeah, the Google, the Google Glass Explorer Edition. So, But before we dive into that, let's go ahead and thank our first sponsor, which is Audible.com. So uh, for those of you that are listening and watching, Audible is offering you guys a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to try out their services. So basically this is a nouveau version of books on tape or books on CDs. Um, if you don't have time to actually sit down and read the book that everybody's been telling you to read, like everyone told me to read uh, in the Plex, which is the story of Google, but I just don't have the capacity or time to you know, actually open a book because I'm driving a lot and everything. But with audible.com and their mobile applications, I'm able to uh, listen to the book, and it's actually read not by the author, um, but by someone who well reads very well. Some of the books are actually read by the author. So Tina Fey reads her own autobiography, uh, which as a comedian she does it very well and has her own kind of uh, comedic flair to it. And there are a, a number of other books that you would probably want to read. Um, you know, The Iliad is in there. Uh, you could also get The Hobbit, anything related to Harry Potter and his friends. Um, there's a ton. They have over 100,000 books on the service, too, so you'll definitely definitely find something that you like. And instead of having to spend money to try it out, the free service, or the free trial, rather, you get it for 30 days, and you get a free book. So that's worth maybe 20 to $30 right there. So go ahead and uh, head over to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy for the free trial, and we thank them for being sponsors of the Wires Weekly and the LTG network. So let's go ahead and dive into the first thing. Now, uh, the HTC One is, well, with, without a shadow of a doubt, HTC's kind of home run or attempt at a home run. It is their last chance at this point to be a relevant OEM in this growing market of phones uh, up against Apple and Samsung and even the likes of LG to a certain degree. And... Um, the HTC One was announced on, well, I forget on, but it was announced in February, and it hasn't been released yet. It's, there was delay after delay, and it still hasn't been released. It, well, it's going to be released next week. However, in certain cities in the United States, you can actually go to these little booths, um, the HTC Boom Sound Lounge, 
where they have HTC representatives showing off the phone. And I went to the one downtown San Francisco, and uh, I met up with uh, their representative. His name is Sergio. He's a really good guy. I've actually known him from my other uh, prior uh, employment. He was the HTC rep for my store, and uh, he told me about uh, about these uh, this I guess this refabbed storage compartment because if you look at it, it looks like you know the kind of storage compartment that you'll find on ships and they completely refabricated it to be a lounge they got couches they got a love seat and then inside they got these huge um, you know uh, huge HD TVs where they're demonstrating the different features of the phone as well as um, using the phone as the remote control the on and off switch is an IR blaster which is actually kind of cool um, so yeah, if you've never had a chance to check out the HTC One and you're on the fence between getting that and maybe the Galaxy S4, this is your chance to do it in a really good way to try before you buy. Now, obviously, you don't get to take it home, but they have no they have no time limit. You can play with it as long as you want. You can uh, you can ask as many questions as you like, and um, even even I didn't get to. Uh, get to uh, walk away with one but they said they'd be sending one to us probably within the next week or so so uh, yeah this uh, if you go to lazytechguys.com I took a few snapshots of the booth as well as the actual phone itself and I gotta say the phone itself is gorgeous it's a, a aluminum unibody great camera great screen edge to edge screen uh, looks very nice in bright sunlight it's downtown San Francisco the sun was shining it was gorgeous in the city today and I was still able to see the phone. I didn't have to kind of cover it up with my shade or anything like that with what, uh, with uh, the issue that you might have with some other phones. And, uh, yeah, uh, Sean, I, I know that maybe this wouldn't be uh, up your alley per se, but if you know someone <laughs> who's on the fence of getting this phone or, you know, or another phone, um, these, uh, I guess, to, this tour is going to end this Friday. Friday, April 19th. So if you live in the residing cities, go ahead and check it out as soon as you can. Um, San Francisco, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, and Washington, D.C. Um, the HTC One will be available for AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. T-Mobile looks to be uh, May 1st or sometime in the late 20th. Uh, wait, they say, I think they say... Or second the, century. <laughs> the late... The late <laughs> The late, late, late uh, April twentieth. So, like this, I, I think uh, T-Mobile tweeted something like April twenty fourth is when the HTC One is going to come. Um, Sprint is going to have the HTC One available on April nineteenth, uh, both in silver and black with the two year contract and for uh, for two hundred dollars. <laughs> AT and T is going to have uh, not only the thirty two gig but also the exclusive sixty four gig for two ninety nine on a two year commitment. And uh, yeah, it, I'm, it's pretty cool. I I, uh, I can't wait to actually you know dive into it, give it a little bit more than just ooh look new phone, but you know give it a really good uh, hands on experience and, and a review. So so can I can I throw something out there? Go ahead. I got a message for HTC. Release the phone. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah. I know, it, they just don't. No more delays. Release the stupid phone. How was that? Did it taste no, good? I agree. Did it taste good? What you just drank? It was good. It tastes like apple cider. Yeah, that's you know, the thing. I can hear the gulp. Then I think in anyone who listens to this will be like, man, that man took a really big gulp of whatever he was drinking. It's this monster drink. It's, it's called Uber Monster. It's called water. Come on. It's water with a ton of caffeine, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on. Um, another uh, exclusive kind of um, experience that I got to try – Got a chance to it's check a, out. It's a Super Mario brother. Yeah, that's right. Walking with a mallet and a phone. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, so um, Tech 21, we've actually reviewed a Tech 21 case in the past. Victor reviewed it for the Galaxy S3, and he still uses it, and he still loves it uh, till this day after six months later. So if that's any test to you know the longevity of the case, you know it, uh, the Tech 21 cases are very, very good. But what they actually got a chance to demonstrate to me was this orange material that you see before you is called D3O. I don't really know the technical term before it, but D3O is basically impregnated into the edge of all the Tech 21 cases, and it absorbs a lot of the impact. 
And to demonstrate how much impact it can absorb, I wrapped my finger around with D3O and smashed it with, the, with that mallet, and my finger was obviously safe. Um, hmm. And then to prove even f much further how much that I, as a user, trust D3O is a safe material, I wrapped it around my, my eight-year-old's finger and smashed his finger, and he thought it was a lot of fun, and I got it on camera. So if you uh, go to our YouTube page and uh, check out the impressions of the Tech 21 cases and screen protectors, you'll, you'll be able to see it on there. He's my impact specialist. Uh, thank you, Franklin, for that. But uh, yeah, yeah give him a little evil can evil helmet too. Get him all ready to go for his future. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have to go that far, luckily. But um, Tech Twenty One, they have cases available for a lot of these Samsung models as well as HTC, and some of their new um, featured devices are, are obviously the uh, iPhone 4S and iPhone 5. Um, but one thing that they are just now announcing is their impact shield. And these are all the cases that I got a chance to look at. The impact shield is kind of a new screen protector. It's more than just a, uh, it's more than just a plastic film that with adhesive on one side. It's actually three layer, um, three pieces fused into one. So the first layer um, is, is hard and it disperses the impact force over a wider area. The second layer is called bullet shield uh, which features BASF, um, impact protection, interlayer. BASF is a material found in bulletproof glass. So that material is also now in this screen protector. So just, you know, <laughs> to think of, it's not bulletproof. Don't think your phone is not bulletproof. Either. So but it's that much more protected against, you know, impact. Um, and then the third layer um, is a soft layer, but it, it also just has uh, absorbs the rest of the impact. The, the screen protector, the, the um, impact shield, actually can absorb up to 80% of, of the impact. So um, that was one of the biggest things that of all the screen protectors that I've put on for customers, of all the screen protectors that I've tested for lazy tech guys, this is probably one of the most um, heavy-duty impact screen protector. But that's not it. That's not all. They, the clarity of the screen protector is almost perfect. Like, you wouldn't even notice that there's a screen protector on the phone if you didn't see the edge of the screen protector. Um, second of all, it, it's very easy to put on. You don't have to be, like, one of those experts that you see in the mall. Because you, you'll see in the mall the guys that try to get you to put you know, buy their screen protector, and they charge you a little bit more so they could apply it on your phone so they make it sound like oh it's so high tech that you need us the expert to put it on uh, yeah you don't need that with this um, and then lastly it, it has something called self heal anti scratch so if you were to scratch it like I did with a metal brush or Brillo pad or even with your keys um, it will you'll see right before your eyes it will actually remove the scratch mark and if you think of uh, some of their top competitors like Invisishield and Zag, um, what they promise is that if you scratch the screen protector, it'll just destroy the screen protector, but your device is still intact. Well, that's fine, but now I have to go buy another screen protector. So with this, uh, not only is the screen is my device safe, the screen protector is still safe, and I don't have to make an, any more unnecessary purchases. So. Um, we actually talked with uh, the head of marketing, a really, really nice guy, uh, Giles is his name. And uh, funny thing, I lived maybe about 30 minutes away from where he lives in, in, in England. So I was like, oh, it's, it's a very uh, uh, small world. But in any case, he, uh, he, he and I are working out something so we could actually possibly do a giveaway in the next coming weeks, whether it be the screen protectors or the case or both. So keep an eye out for that if you're looking for a new case for either for the Galaxy S2, uh, sorry, Galaxy S3, Galaxy S4, the Note 2, iPhone 4, iPhone 5, and, and uh, well, you know, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that. So moving on into some of the mobile headlines. Uh, I'm going to butcher this name because my uh, Chinese is terrible. Can I, can I butcher it for you? Okay. I'm going to turn the butchering over to Mr. Wilburn. And I am going to turn the butchering over to Apple because Apple – say it for me. Oh, don't do this. Sorry, I ain't mean. 
Yeah, that's ah. not how you say it. Anyway. <laughs> okay. That's not how you say it. Well, sometimes the Apple speech thing will let, like it helps with some words. I don't think they got the Chinese text, or maybe I didn't install it. You never know. Anyway, so um, so the name of the company is um, actually it's Iomi. So the name of the company is Iomi, and the C and they are an OEM company who's based out in the Asian market, and they're looking to well make it out this way into the United States. Now they're not just any small little independent like little guy coming in here. No, they're apparently a major player. They sold they made two billion, I guess, recently, and they've sold seven point nine seven point one nine million headsets already, and I guess they're po they're poised to hit fifteen million. In a very short time. So these guys are very successful, and they're coming to the United States with phones with specs with phones that have specs that rival the Galaxy S4 and HTC One, but for only for a hell of a lot less of the money. Now, well, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Go ahead. Now, when I was looking at the uh, the entire deal, it looks like some of the specs are. I mean, some of the prices they're talking about. Just so you can get a general idea, is they were having a they had a couple of price tiers that they're looking to uh, price out. They got one, I guess they're calling the one S, and it looks like it's going to be around two hundred to two hundred and forty bucks. And the other one looks like it's going to be about three hundred and eighty dollars. That's going to be the I guess the the flagship phone. But we're talking three hundred and eighty dollars. Um, that means not that's not subsidized or anything like that and of course this is all transferred from that currency over to the united states currency dollars so but um yeah there's gonna be a new player out here and but it still remains to be seen whether these guys can really really make a dent in this market because the united states market and we're actually every country is a different country sometimes you do good in the uk and you don't do good in germany sometimes you do good in the united states and you don't do good in well China, and looks like that. I'm a. I'm hoping that wouldn't be a sick, sick situation here. But Tony, what are you thinking here, man? What are you thinking about what this company, Iomi, is looking to do? Well, if you think of companies like ZTE and Huawei, they're huge in the Asian market. And over here, we kind of think of them as the the up and coming players. And it's just recently that we're starting to notice that some of their devices are more than just mid-range or, or, or entry level. And so I, I, I'm, think, I'm, I'm looking at, um, at this new company and you know, with their sales that they have in the Asian market and the, um, the kind of clout that that can create and the fact that they were featured on uh, All Things D is probably going to help them um, but they need to continue that that good press. They need to continue that the keep the ball rolling, and hopefully, whatever the next kind of flagship devices that they're talking about are are better than you know better than uh, that they that they've uh, pushed out before in the Asian market. Because right now, um, I you know we definitely welcome new OEMs, but you have to show why at least here in the states we 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 have such a short attention span we need to be wowed and i don't know if it just that's because of our attention span but you are right we do need to be wowed. <laughs> i don't blame it on our short attention spans i i do i don't okay i don't i can't you gotta dude, i don't believe it i believe in us you believe in us you yeah, believe in the warriors all right. Well, another company that is uh, essentially a little up and coming is a company that is a spinoff, or the the heads of this company were top level executives for Nokia, and they're called Jola. Jola's actually been around for quite some time. They're they're really not new per se, but they haven't really developed and created an actual device as of yet. So uh, I, I guess next month they will be announcing uh, their first actual phone. Um, and if you get the new phone as a pre-order, you will get it as a special edition. So I don't know what the special edition phone will have versus the actual regular version. Uh, but according to uh, Jola, they, they want they wa they want to bring something you know very different to the market. And the thing is, um, I think it's on top of Android, but they're also building it on top of Nokia N9 and Migo. So I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly what the underlining uh, OS is, but they call it Sailfish. 
And uh, if you go to lazytechguys.com, there's actually a little a demonstration video presenting Jola. And uh, it looks really nice. I mean, you've got kind of live widgets or live tiles, uh, swiping gesture controls, and a couple of a couple of other different unique uh, features. Uh, but all in all, <laughs> this is another kind of competitor. I don't know if it would ever come over to here to the United States. But, you know, uh, considering that uh, right now we uh, – I, I don't think I, – I really hope that it's not going to be a whole other OS – you know, because we're looking at Ubuntu on top of Android. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Android everywhere, Windows Phone, BlackBerry. So I don't think we necessarily, you know, uh, Firefox OS. So I, uh, whatever this Migo and N9 is going to be doing, it might be on top of Android. Maybe Rad could clarify that next time he comes on. Um, but, yeah, best of luck to them. And I guess next month we'll find out a little bit more information, and we will let you guys know. Now, something that it didn't come out of left field, but we uh, when it, when the announcement was finally made official, it made a certain Wilburn not so happy. No, no. Okay, so let's get this straight. I thought you... that I was unhappy. I was like, I was just kind of like, what? Maybe just because it it maybe it didn't come out of left field for you, but I assure you that thing came so far out of left field. I did not expect that thing coming. It went damn near popped me in the head. All right, so here's the deal. LinkedIn, you know, the people who do the professional social network that's used by professionals to communicate and potentially get yourself a job and things like that, have paid nine, $90 million for, from Alfonso Labs to buy the newsreader Pulse. Now, Pulse is an awesome product. I absolutely love this thing. I've been using it for ever since you, actually you introduced me to it, Tony, or you mentioned it, and I was like, oh. Oh, it's great. Anyway, so they paid $90 million for this. And you and I would wonder why. I mean, what would a social network who specializes in, like, business professionals communicating with each other gain from getting a newsreader that has everything from – that has really your every average RSS feed and feed – like, it has the most important website of all, Lazy Tech Guys on it and other things on there. Um, but I was looking through the slideshow, and they're saying that they're just going to add in there the world's most largest professional network, and plus the le leading news reader on a mobile distribution. They bring these members together, I guess, and I don't know. I guess it makes things easier. I guess what they're just going to do is just maybe use the Pulse stuff to I, – I don't know. I, I just – I'm looking for integration that makes sense, and I'm I can't I don't see it. <laughs> Help me, dude. I don't what. I I'm with you on this one. Um, I mean, I I use Pulse at, obviously as as a news reader. Um, I also use it to find. It's basically my you know instead of going to like the Sunday Sunday funnies uh, on the back of the Sunday Times mm -hmm. like you used to do when the as a kid. I, I just use Pulse to do that every day. I have literally a page of humor, which brings me to like 9gag and all the other kind of you know stuff that just talks about you know funny stuff. But um, but I so I definitely wouldn't use Pulse as a my professional kind of source or anything like that. So I guess I mean they're saying the Pulse experience will continue yeah, to be supported. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is I, more important. Oh, is that? I, yeah, I, I, I just personally, I mean, I, I was talking to somebody else about this, and th they couldn't make heads or tails about it either because it's kind of like two different business models. Yeah, so listen to this. This is uh, in a post. This is a post from uh, Deep Nashir, who's the LinkedIn Vice VP for Products and User Experiences. And he said, this is a quote for him, the partnership or the service can be a def is a definitive professional publishing platform. But this is what they're trying to build: where all professionals come to consume content, and where publishers come and come to share content. Okay, I mean that means I don't get it. it just, this doesn't make any sense to me. But Rad, yell! I know you're yelling at the screen. All right. Well, you didn't show up. And hey, it worked yesterday. I think t Victor did say it'd be great, and then you did show up. So I'm just saying it could happen. Oh, did it? 
Yeah, it did happen. Anyway, I don't get this. I'm not. I. I. Okay. I like Poll, so I hope they don't screw it up. I hope they just kind of leave it be. And I'm not sure how they're going to integrate into LinkedIn. Nor do I see how anybody using Polls would want to start using LinkedIn because they're using Polls. I. I don't get it. But I just hope they don't change anything. Well, the, you know, well they got I, all that Facebook integration. They changed all the sharing of Polls recently. They've. Um, well, you mean like the highlights and stuff? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah, I don't use that. Like the, I don't use the highlights or the read later stuff. I either read it now or I just don't read it. You know, you know how you can do like the add it, connect it to Instapaper or somehow put it mm -hmm. in into your Evernote and stuff like that. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are a lot of you out there that really use those side apps and use that like really d deep integration. But at least for me, um, it's not connected to my Google Reader. Obviously, um, I. I uh, I I used to have it connected to my Facebook and Twitter, but it was just uh, it was as annoying as going to my, my Facebook and Twitter. So I stopped doing that. Really? I mean, I was curious. What I mean, I saw that feature and I was like, I don't want to do that. Well, it just makes it a little bit easier to share it on Facebook and Twitter. But then there are yeah. some ways that you can get get a feed of Facebook and Twitter. Um, there are some publishers that I didn't find on Flipboard that I did find on Pulse. So that's mm -hmm. that's good. Um, I think it just validates Pulse that much more that they are backed by LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is a professional social network site. So if you want v v validity and you want um, you know news and information uh, from a source that you can trust, and LinkedIn probably wouldn't do anything that they don't deem trustworthy, or uh, you know back anything that they don't deem trustworthy. Then you know you would use Pulse, but the thing is, you know, because Pulse is in 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 any in it in, in essence an RSS reader, you can you can just RSS anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I guess I guess it's good. they're going to be um, uh, curating some content as well too. Yeah, I don't get it. it doesn't make right. sense to me, but it. it <laughs> All right. Well, one thing uh, that we maybe not get, but we un maybe not even understand, but w that we can plainly to transition from topic talk to, topic. to yeah. is Verizon Wireless <laughs> changing their upgrade policies and unfortunately making it a little less friendlier. Now, uh, Sean, you you had asked me about this, and I had to clarify it in the article uh, there on afterwards. But essentially, Verizon Wireless used to allow you to upgrade 20 months into your 24-month contract. And that was kind of nice. You didn't have to wait your full two years. And um, even before that, there were some customers who were able to upgrade their phones every 12 months. You just have to pay, had to pay an early upgrade fee of only $20. So that's gone. And it looks like starting. Well, I think it, it's uh, about the. It's happening already. Um, if you are looking to upgrade, you will have to wait a full 24 months to upgrade into your next phone. Now, this might not affect you um, uh, until January 20, uh, January 2014, because uh, they're not changing this policy for people who already have. A, an upgrade date um, 20 months into their contract. This is just kind of moving forward. So if I were to upgrade my phone tomorrow, I would have to wait a full 24 months from tomorrow uh, to get a new phone. So Okay, why? Why did they do this? I don't get this. I do not get this move. Oh, can, can I add something else there too? Worse. Okay. So in... <laughs> If you are in a family share plan and you want to, so Sean, you and I are in a family share plan and I want to upgrade and I'm not eligible, but you are, I can use your upgrade um, and because we're already on one account, that's allowed. That's what's called an alternative upgrade. Now here's the caveat though. If you have a feature phone and I want a smartphone, uh, or sorry, yeah, if, if, if for whatever reason I wanted a feature phone and you had a smartphone, I can't upgrade that. According to the new rules, you are allowed to do these alternative upgrades, but only for devices of the same category and the same price range. So if you had an iPhone 
and I wanted to upgrade to a basic flip phone and use your iPhone's upgrade, I couldn't I can't do that anymore. Hmm. So now they're making it that much harder for consumers um, who need upgrades, who might need to upgrade um, for an emergency purpose. Uh, they're making it harder for them not to be able to get some of their phones. Because I, I know from a, I know from a retail standpoint, I'll have a dad come in. I lost my phone. I need to get a new phone. Okay, sir, you have an upgrade available on your MiFi hotspot. On your wireless hotspot, you are eligible for a two-year contract. However, the, you cannot get a smartphone because a hotspot and a smartphone are not in the same category. Okay, so I'm still curious on why Verizon would do this. I, I mean, don't you, know. You, you, I, figure, I, you figure that a company in their position would want to make sure they keep everybody as happy as possible. I mean, when you sit there and give people the option to upgrade 20 months out of 24 months, that actually makes people, you keep them as customers before their contracts run out and before they even consider, maybe I should go to another carrier. Before they even cross their mind and they still got four months with Verizon, they can upgrade and sign on to another two years and you lock them down for even longer. Exactly. I mean, that's a simple very simple thing they've done that works and then the fee pay a fee upgrade sooner for people who are impatient fine you know what do that that's great it makes sense but now to make the only thing i can see of see is they want to make money off the people who are upgrading and canceling which doesn't make any sense because why that would only make sense if their people are leaving them in a mass exodus or they're expecting that to happen which no one expects that to happen. No one wants that to happen. Not in their business. I don't get this. I don't. Get I, this. I was talking to somebody else, and we're, we're complaining about this because not only are not only are we, you know, am I an ex Verizon employee, and he's he he's a, a, a an employee of another carrier, and we we're talking about different carriers and the different policy changes, uh, but we're we're also customers of these companies, you know, and you know it it, it hurts us as customers to kind of be treated as like what else are you going to do because that's kind of how I feel like Verizon is in my opinion they offer the best signal and the best service in the areas that I need it I know this and they know I know this and they know I need them so they know that I ain't leaving so I got to deal with it and they know I will continue to pay and we, you, Sean, you and I have these kind of talks about big companies just kind of sticking it to us because they know they can. And, you know, all, all we are doing as consumers is just kind of griping and complaining and everything. But, but taking it. I'm taking it. Just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, um, uh, now, when the time comes, then we can strike. I'm joking about that. Well, Verizon is trying to look a little bit better in, in their in your eyes and what they're going to be doing uh, starting uh, April 21st this is still kind of under the under the rug it hasn't been officially uh, made uh, um, or hasn't been made official yet but uh, they will be offering a device payment plan sound cool right okay. kind of like T-Mobile right well um, you can get a phone they won't check your credit or anything it's not a credit card but you can get a phone and pay it in installments, uh, very similar to how T-Mobile does it, right? Wrong. T-Mobile does it without a contract. T-Mobile does it for 20 months or 18 months, 18 to 20 months. Um, and when you are done paying, you uh, well, you can even leave your, your T-Mobile service and just continue paying off the phone, but there's no early termination fee. There's no cancellation fee. Um, but once you're done paying off your phone, your monthly bill, you know, goes down, essentially. Uh, with Verizon's, it's uh, you're paying it off over the course of 12 months, so your monthly payment is a little bit more. Um, and then also, you're still in a two-year contract with it. And uh, there's oh, here's here's another thing. There's a $24 finance charge that shows up on the bill for 12 months as a $2 fee. So <laughs> uh, they're trying to throw you a bone and say, hey, yeah, we're changing your upgrade fees. Um, but hey, if you can't afford a three hundred dollar phone, we'll let you pay it off in in, in twelve months. Um, but but we're still gonna st uh, stick you with these other fees. I, I smell a little bit of me too around here. <laughs> I smell some me too around here. I'm like T-Mobile says, 
hey, we got this three deal. And they're like, well, we also have a deal where you can pay off a phone too. Oh, yeah. No, it's, def- it, it's definitely a me too, but it's not a me too. It, 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 it's, no, it's a me too. This is a me too. They Every single one of these moves, it seems like they're adding, are reactionary moves to what other carriers are no. doing to try to make themselves stand out. But they're not, but Verizon hasn't done anything. This no. Is, they, haven't, this is, they haven't done anything. They're just trying to. They're changing. They're trying to change their perception without really changing anything, and that's what I'm seeing they're doing. And it's. I mean, I hope people don't fall for this. I mean, I hope people just go for like, just give me the dang two year plan and subsidize my damn phone. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just give it to me. Stop saying, well, if you want, you can pay off the phone in twelve months, but you're still for two years. What's the freaking point? Just give me the subsidize my phone. <laughs> it, it's it's silly. It's it's silliness. It. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of always liked the idea with T-Mobile that they allowed you to pay off the, 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 the uh, pay off your phone over the course of however your contract was. And now that they make it available to you without a contract, and you still can get the top of the line phone, mm-hmm. you know, it's like it. You know, T-Mobile is looking that much better in a lot of consumers' eyes. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like well, I get. I was on the Google Plus um, com- community uh, for. Guy Kiyosaki, and when the T-Mobile announcement came up, a number of people from Verizon, AT and T, said, "You know what? My early termination fee is like over two hundred dollars, but I'm going to save so much money and have no contract, but I'm still going to get the phone that I really, really want, and with a more than decent network." Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know. Ah. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about let's talk about something fun and happy, okay? Then not not so dreary and downtrodden and everything. Let's talk about the Google Glass Explorer specs. Yeah, this is it, guys. We have specifications. You know what that means, right? We're specific. No. Oh, that means okay. if I hit play, this thing should freaking work and it doesn't play for me today. There it is. Yeah. Woo-hoo. <laughs> All right, so see, you put that in here, and I was like, oh, I guess you queued that up. Anyway, so we have specs for Google Google Glass, everybody. So I'm going to go over all of these here because I know you're all excited, and I know you guys all have your whatever amount it's going to cost for this thing. All right, so fit. It is It has adjustable nose pads and durable frame to fit any face. Extra nose pads any are face. available in two sizes. Two sizes. The display High resolution display equivalent to a 25 inch HD screen from about eight feet away. Eight feet away. Yes, I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what that means, but I, I'm going to be measuring that out later on. But like, okay, it would look like this. Cameras. It has a five megapixel camera for photos and it can shoot 720 video. 720 video. The audio is, uses the bone conduction transducer, which means. What's that? that? What it means is that they're going to vibrate your inner ear to give you the audio rather than actually fire sound into your ears. So is that safer? What it does, yes, actually. Well, you know, I don't know if it's safer or not, but it seems safer when you think about it. Uh They have technology that's out there like already here before. And and actually, I'll give you one little fun caveat about this. And I just read this here a minute ago. Um, The reason why, and I'll say this to everybody, the reason why whenever we hear ourselves talk and then we listen to ourselves recorded, our voices are always higher pitch than they we think they are, Mm -hmm. is because our our bones vibe. they do better with low frequencies than the air does. The air does better with high frequencies. So it, it doesn't. the air doesn't do low frequencies very well. So even though in our heads we hear the bass that we're trying to produce, the air doesn't transmit it, <laughs> and it doesn't get recorded. And when we listen to ourselves back, we go, oh, that's what I sound like? <laughs> because well, we don't I just bass. learned something right now. Exactly. So this is the same basic idea. The inner ear, your inner ear is what vibrates, and that's what actually vibrates, and that's what causes you to hear it, and that's what we hear as sound. This thing is directly going to touch that, which means if this, I mean, as they're saying, that means you're supposed to get the best sound. It's like it's just going to be touching directly to the part of your body that's going to, it vibrates directly to the part of your body that causes you to hear. Okay. Yeah. Storage. 12, oh yeah, connectivity, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth storage, 12 megabytes of u- usable gigabytes. memory. Gigabytes. Gigabytes. 12 gigabytes of usable memory synced with uh, Google Drive, 16 gigabytes of flash total. 
Battery, one do full day of total use. If you're using Google Hangout, Hangouts and um, video recording, it takes up more battery, which is really funny. Like, can you imagine a Google Hangout where you're just firing your eye at everybody else? <laughs> 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 anyway, I'm sure the camera doesn't go in that direction, but it'd be kind of cool if it did. Charger <laughs> includes one micro USB car charger and cable. Um, there are plenty of charges out there. The, the glass is tested with the included one in mind. Use it and preserve the long, generous glass. In other words, it comes with a charger. You can use others, but try to use theirs. And um, it works with any Bluetooth-capable phone. The My Glass Pena app requires 4.0.3 ice cream sandwich or higher. And it does enable you will be using GPS and SMS. So, yes, they will ask, ask for access. So, um, so did you save up your money yet, Tony? Oh, I was going to ask for a loan from you. No, oh, well, I can, I can loan you like a dollar. Oh, well, you're no help. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, this, is, <laughs> this is just the, the developer preview. So obviously it's going to change a little bit. Maybe they'll have a better camera um, when the actual consumer product comes out and it will be cheaper. That, that's the other speculation that it's going to be cheaper. Um, I wonder how it's going to work for people who have um, who's who are either not completely hearing impaired, but who wear like hearing aids, but still want to use this technology. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they will, um, you know, do something to help them out too, because, um, you know, th this could be cool for them as well. Well, thank you, Sean. Is there anything else uh, about Google Glass that you maybe heard or seen in the past week that you want to add to this? Uh... I wish to say I had one. All right. You know what? I actually. I'm surprised to hear that from you. No, you know, I'll say this much. Um, I always joke about where I work is we could pretty much make a sitcom or a reality show out of where I work, and it would be the most interesting TV show just because, you know, how you like, you know, people watch Pawn Stars and they're really hooked yeah. on that show. Yeah, yeah. My, my job is like that. It's, okay. it's so much entertainment happens daily. So I would actually wear that and I would just show people what's a day, like every day that I go through, and it would be the most entertaining thing in the world. It'd be like, I cannot believe he goes through this. This is what happens every day there. The laughs, the silliness, the jokes. The okay, so you bring up a good point, which is the video sharing of like doing Google Plus Hangouts live that everybody can see. Personally, I'm tired of that feature. I, I want to see the other apps that they said that they were developing. I want to see, I don't know, I, I want to see, uh, I, I want to really see maps really work in real time. Uh, I'm, somehow, I don't know how they would project what you see in glass and outside glass. I don't know how they would show it, but um, I, I like to see maps work in real time. I want to see email work. Like, how how is how is the email come in? Do they preview just the first few lines? Do they preview everything? Um, can you somehow do Pinterest? Can you somehow do Foursquare um, with without touching anything? Uh, I, I noticed there is a button on the side. What does that do? I still have a ton of questions. Uh, I'm excited the fact that it's coming out because a lot of these questions are probably going to be answered. But stop showing videos of you doing uh, point of view videos. Okay. I, we've seen that. So here's the deal. The, the funny thing about it is I know you're tired of that part and we'll go on right after this, but um, I actually find the point of view videos the still most intriguing ones of all because mm. like, we use cameras every day to take a picture of snapshot of our world of what we see or what we're going through on a daily basis. Like you go through an event, you can finally do it. When I saw those events, when I, when I was watching like those ones where you see the people who are doing like the gymnastics and you saw it from their point of view and the, in the biking and you saw it from their view, what it actually reminded me of is when I used to play football. And I remembered when I watch football and when I play football, it's a completely different thing. I mean, what I saw, and how the game looked to me on the field compared to when I was on the sidelines anywhere else, which was an experience that was just, you could never experience any other way except for doing it. Like, okay. there are certain things you could never, ever imagine any, what it would look like unless you're doing it. And the Google Glass, as crazy as this is, actually partially enables people the ability to finally share things and show people what they're doing on a daily basis. And I, mean, I know that there's many other apps that's going to make it cooler and more useful, but mm -hmm. at the same time, 
that is what we do with our eyes. That is what we see. And that is our number one use for that vision. And in a way, if it does that extremely well, the other features are icing in the cake. But as long as it does the video recording, it's, I don't know. It's, that's just how I view it. Okay. See, my, my thing, though, is you could somehow do that with the GoPro. You could figure out how to get, get the GoPro to look, have the look of that's a little bit more realistic to, uh, rather than have it on top of somebody's head. Yeah. You, yeah. you could figure it out. I'm sure yeah. you could figure it out. But, but, but. Say- you but I know that the I know Google Glass is so much more than a point of view camera. That's my only thing. No, no. I, I get that you uh, getting immersed and having those feelings again of being back in football. No, no. Um, or are, are like the, I guess maybe nostalgic to you. And that's no, it, it's more of a you can show people something that they can't see any other way unless they're experiencing it, and that's something you get out of it, and that's it. Now, but I'm just saying the the the. The key selling feature for Glass will be the video feature. That's going to sell uh, yeah, to I 99% guess. of the people out there. The other apps is the icing on the cake. But the video thing, I mean, just showing this is what it was like from their point of view. It'll be like, thank you. I understand now. And it makes sense to anyone if they get it. Yeah, because you know, you know when they were doing the skydiving demo at Google I.O.? Mm-hmm. I swore a number of times. I was like, how do I know that this isn't just the GoPro? I mean, I get it. I know it's not, but how yeah. do I know? And it's easy. Oh, how yeah, do I know? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Easy. I mean, easily to the hide, well hidden, and supposedly stylish. Like, you take that on top of the GoPro. Like you say, anyone can do this with a GoPro. You're absolutely right. But not very many people are going to want to wear them on their heads and have the GoPro on top. The, having the glasses is like a new sleek way of doing it, and you're seeing it from eye level. Unless you want to have the GoPro in front of your face or having it on a helmet mounted in front of your face, it's not the same. I mean, no, that's what I'm saying. Like you could, you, you could, you could somehow figure it out. Know, that's the point. Is you don't want to figure it out. Like you're asking people to like, you know what? I'll get, I'll get this wagon over there without these horses, even though the horses ran without me. You know, let me use these cows and all that. Everybody else would be like, I'm just gonna get, get some horses. <laughs> I'm just going to do it the right way and just get there the easiest way possible versus trying to find the most roundabout way. Of, I don't know. It, it's great. I am excited for it. I'm well, excited. I want to, I guess I want to see more icing. That's yeah, I want to see more too, but I'm, if it's $500 or less, I might consider getting them. Why, why, why do I see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Cause I'm going to give me some tea. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then Let's go ahead and move on, and this is my time to talk about some quick app updates. Now, Facebook Home is going to be available not just for Android, uh, but some certain features of Facebook Home are going to be available for iOS and Windows Phone. And yesterday, for both the iPad and iPod Touch and iPhone, um, Facebook got an update to add stickers and chat heads. But neither stickers and chat heads are right now active, but they will be active in the next coming days or next coming weeks or something like that. But at least now, as long as you've updated your app, it's going to be available and it'll pop up automatically. Um, but the only thing with that, Facebook chat heads only works within your Facebook app. So you'll see the chat heads circle will pop up with the pictures of the person's profile. Um, but if you leave your Facebook app, you don't see that little circle anymore. Oh, what's the point? I'm exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. No, what is the point? So let's go ahead and move on. The <laughs> Starbucks application, uh, the Starbucks application for iOS, which is really cool because it also um, is a payment option for, for getting your cup of joe every day, uh, will now feature the ability to get pick of the week downloads uh, without having you go to the Starbucks location. Now, if, if you're like me and you only get Starbucks every once in a while, but you go to Starbucks um, just to see what the pick of the week is uh, every ever so often, which if you don't know is a free app, book, movie, or song, uh, you can now do it through the Starbucks app um, for free. So just download the Starbucks app for iPhone. You can download for the iPad and just blow it up and then download uh, a new game. And right now, I think the the pick of the week is Star the Angry Birds Star Wars game, which is it's only a dollar, but hey, you save a dollar if you want it for free. <laughs> LinkedIn for Windows Phone 8 is now updated with live tile support. Uh, YouTube for iOS gains access to live streams. So if you are watching us right now on your iOS device, you're watching us live. And this will hopefully be available on Android soon, but it's interesting that they are making it uh, first available for iOS. 
And that's it for the quick updates. And then we're going to get into the, uh, I guess, the stick of it all, which is the battle of the launchers. And it's not really a battle. It's just comparing two different launchers, which have both been announced within the past two weeks, uh, one of which which has um, made you know new strides everywhere, uh, another um, that maybe you haven't heard so much about. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, talk to Sean about the first one. All right, so the first launcher we're going to talk about, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys heard about this. This is the Facebook launcher you guys might have heard about. It's called Facebook Home. Who? It just came out for Android, and voila, here it is. All right, so I wrote a review about that, which I should probably load up here, which, of course, I did not do. Preparation is the key to success. Remember that as I am not prepared. All right, so... My initial impressions of it. So first off, it is a launcher. What a launcher is, is it's like a skin on top of the phone. So just for those who don't understand. So in a way, the first thing about it is when you install it is you'll notice that it doesn't need any permissions at all. Zero permissions whatsoever, which is very, very interesting because, well, all it does is just put some stuff on top of your phone, on top of your regular Android skin, but it's not actually accessing anything you aren't already accessing so it makes it real you can try it out safely without you know worry about your permissions or your privacy being stolen or anything like that any more than it already has been by facebook <laughs> um, <laughs> so one of the most noticeable things after you install it and after you get it going it's the fact that it takes your news feed and it makes it as your home screen so um, it's, for the people who are listening just imagine blown up blown up larger full-size pictures of the your, the pictures that people are sharing on your screen in a very nice way at the very top of the page it has like the um the words like for example tony hannity's like this tony hannity's like the quick draw quick draws are coming they look and work amazing we can't wait to ship them and have them in your hand i know you guys heard it today so this thing has 39 likes and 25 comments so, and it gives you a very big screen for the people looking at it. I hope you can see the screen there. And you simply just swipe from left to right, and you can just go by item by item and goes um, topic by topic and go through the entire needs feed. So, for example, oh, Man of Steel trailer. Oh, this person named Tim McKee is talking about a quote from Vernon Reed. Then uh, another guy here is talking about it's snowing in April. Okay. Anyway, so now one of the coolest thing is you can, if you want, if you like a post, let's say if I like this quick draw thing too. I'm in agreement with, with Tony. I like this post. All you got to do is double tap the screen. It puts a big thumbs up there and you instantly like it. Making apps, liking things on Facebook and just going through your posts. Like, I like that double click. I like that double click. A very quick and easy process. So I am just going through right now and I'm like going through, okay, oh, I like that double click. Oh, I like that. Boom. And I go through and liking a bunch of photos very easily. If you like a, uh, if you want to make a comment, there's a little comment went thing at the bottom of the screen that allows you to make a comment see any comments that are on a post like for example i looked at this one here and there goes three comments there are people joking with the thing and then you just swipe down it goes away now from when you close down the screen when you go down to the most basic screen it gives you once again the feed and when you tap the screen once it gives you a little picture icon of yourself a little bubble at the bottom of the screen within the bubble is you take the bubble and you can swipe it up left or right to get three different things if you swipe it up it takes you to your apps window which brings you a very small abbreviated app window that ironically so is missing Missing certain Google app, apps and they're listed right automatically. Hmm, can't figure why. why. <laughs> so you go all the way to the left and then you get all apps and then here you'll find all those other things that are missing, you know, like Google Plus and I don't know. And I was going through the here. Like they had things like Stitcher I could find, but I'm just like, I know I had more than this. Where did all these gaps show up from? Like where's my um, Flipboard? Can you add apps to that main list? I don't see how it does. It does not make sense. You would just go to the, all the way to the left where it says all apps and you would just go to like Flipboard and just select it manually. So, so, you, yes. so in your review, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in your review, you have um, analytics, drive, Netflix, iHeartRadio, iRig, recorder. Are those apps part of the Facebook app drawer or your main app drawer that's the facebook app drawer so it's interesting why would they choose other no, apps versus others or no, no, tony, over if you, tony, if you look at no if you look at this tony if you look you could swipe between multiple pages 
So that's just one page of the app window. If you look at... Um, but it's not in alphabetical order. It's... Nope. nope, not at all. See, if you look here, there's a different page. And then you go to all apps, which is one large window, which is a standard Android up and down sliding thing. And then you go over here, you just get a limited list. And then you get another limited list. And then another limited list. And then and you, you're at the end of the list. And you can't make widgets. You can't make folders. Nope, not at all. Okay. But at the same time, it's like... It, as I'm playing with this, I, I found myself because I'm not a, a, an active, a very active Facebook user. So anytime I feel myself more compelled to use Facebook, something is doing something is happening right. And that is actually the crazy thing that I found about it. Like you mentioned this also, there's no place to take care of photos, so I can't instantly take photos through it and share them on Facebook. Um, I'm not able to easily access all my apps, but then if I'm not a big app person, like for example, my mother, if my mother had, was a Facebook user, I know she would never use an app. Something like this would actually, might actually benefit her because she might find it interesting. Like saying, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, because she doesn't use too many apps. My friend who I, co one of my coworker who's an iPhone person, I never see him do anything but Facebook on that phone. <laughs> never see him do anything but Facebook. So a, a skin like this might actually would benefit someone like him because he would be able to kind of do the things that he does normally. Maybe you should start working instead of getting on Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. Well, you, you, when you can <laughs> check your phone, you know, come on. Do you know how quick you I'm get kidding. It? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm talking to all of us, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> So I so for what this thing was built for, like the whole point of um, the whole point of this was to make um, using Facebook a better experience, make it more interactive, give you more of a people. You start following more of the people rather than being more of an app centric phone to make it more of a people centric phone. And for doing that, it actually does a great job of it, minus the fact the lack of a camera. But minus that portion, which, portion which I you know they're going to fix the. Um, it actually, it kind of got me looking at all these people again who I do know. These people are like, oh, yeah, I didn't know. Oh, that's what they're doing now. Oh, that person went to the beach. And I found myself more engaged until I said, okay, I'm done with this. And then only when I say I'm done with this, let me go back to my regular phone functions. Do I start hitting all the roadblocks with this app, <laughs> with mm -hmm. this launcher? Because then yeah. I was like, okay, let me go back to the regular thing. Oh, wait, how do I, okay, wait, how do I, oh, dang it, how do I? How do you the, get this, to Google now? Is it easy to get to Google now? Not at all. Okay. So what you do, so when you only have several options, the left is messaging, the up is apps, to the right is the last regular app that you had open. So right now, the last app I had open is Chrome. So I go to the right, it goes straight to Chrome. I go back from Chrome, it takes me back to the launcher. There's no home screen. Okay. To get to the home screen, you gotta. You, what I have to do is go down to the main screen and start act and start TouchWiz again and starting TouchWiz because I'm on a Samsung phone. We get to it, or you have to go back to the default like Google Launcher, and then from there you can. Get oh, so you 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 always click the button just once. You don't keep it as always. Oh no no I um I turned it to always for the for the demonstration here and oh, I'll okay. say it this way you all if you seriously want to use this you want to put it on always. You definitely want this on well, always. Yeah, that's how it is for any launcher, for that yeah. matter. Um, so if you really, really are into Facebook and you really – I mean, if that's your thing and you don't really use your phone for anything else, yeah, I would say really give this app a shot. You might really like it. But for the other 95% of you out there in the world who does not <laughs> want to put Facebook as your big deal, then I would bypass it. Just not because the app doesn't do what it does. It actually does what it does extremely well. It's just that it's a very specific app that has a very unique purpose. So, yeah, so it's a good app. It does a good job for what it does. It's just, it's just a, with a limited market of who would you who would benefit from it. You know, it it you I don't know. I can't rate it more than like three and a half stars. Like the features of it, I kind of just gave three. Like it's good, but it's missing stuff. The ease of use and how like easy. It is to install, uninstall, and how it doesn't take permissions. I kind of liked about it, and then it does look really good. And it does work really well. It's just, I don't know, it could do more. Oh, it can do a ton more. Yeah. Yeah. It's can just, you mm -hmm. touch on chat uh, chat heads a little bit? Okay, so chat heads works ex exact. It kind of works as advertised. All of a sudden, a little message will just pop up in the screen. You'll be like, "Look at that!" You click it, and you'll see at the top, and you can just see the message and be like, "Oh, there it is!" And you can respond to it. it it's sort of like it takes 
Now, I know you'll get this, and I know people get this. Like, standard iOS controls, standard Android controls. There's certain swiping, sliding, sm uh, ge gestures that are common on the Android um, system. Well, it pretty much, it's just a different scan using those same gestures. So you click it, you swipe down, you swipe left, you swipe it away. But it is a really good way of doing it. But when I really thought about it, chat heads is important because they make it difficult to find your messages any other way, short of going to the left and looking at the messages through the Facebook UI. <laughs> so it's one of those things where, like, oh, you got to go here. Oh, I got to mix up my messages. It is kind of a cool way of just seeing it because they're making it hard to get to anything short of your main news feed. <laughs> so... It's cool. I, you know, it's just like if you find yourself using this app, definitely install it. But it's just a matter of if you find yourself a major Facebook person or not. Like if you do most of your communications via Facebook, then you might want to start looking into this world. But that's about it. <laughs> so can I tell you my experience? Or <laughs> he changed his picture. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I'm, see, I'm I'm still going through it right now. Like without me trying, without me thinking about it and thinking too hard about it, I'm just going through the news feed. Like oh, that's kind of cute. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like, okay, so you're going through the news feed right now, right? Yeah, and that part, okay. and it's getting me engaged in Facebook more than I ever would have. Awesome. Get how do you get to the first the first update? Pardon me. How do you get to the first update? What do you mean? The most recent update. Now that it goes, it's a random thing. It just goes in order, and it's a random news feed. So it gives you a time, and it just scrolls through them. Like the most. Yeah, but how do you get to the first one? It just scrolls randomly. But how do you, if you want to get to the first one, how do you get to it? You mean my most recent update? Mm -hmm. Oh no, you'd go to Facebook. So using cover feed to get to the, if you were to scroll through 10 different updates on cover feed like okay I've seen all the 10 different updates I want to go back to the first one you have to manually scroll back to the first one there's no quick easy access way to get to the first one no okay how do you update update how do you update the the um, the frequency at, at, of which how often cover feed refreshes and gives you automatically Okay, so and your friends like right now, I like the minute someone puts something on my thing, this thing will instantly update. It'll just pop up instantly. Uh, well, as far as I know, but then okay. I never did. I never did a side by side on it. Like I've noticed that our posts, like when I had this gone, when a post went on our site, I would notice it instantly. Like oh, posts on here. Okay, cover feed, lazy tech guys, you got your thing. Okay. Now the thing is, if no one posts on the feed for a while to keep it interesting, it will start to cycle old ones back at the front. And it'll start putting old ones at the front, and it'll just start to slide them by, it's just so you see different things newer. Does it does it rank them based off of likes? That like, I do not know. No, okay. actually, off likes, no, because right now my first one says one like, second one says okay. sixteen likes, third one says one like, fourth one says seventeen likes, fifth one says forty okay. likes. Okay. So no, it's not by likes. It does it by time. Like it'll do the most recent stuff. But sure. if you do not have an active news feed, they're going to try to keep it interesting by saying, oh, by the way, just in case you missed it. And they usually, and from what I'm able to tell, it seems to go back to within one day. But I don't know yet. I haven't gone further into it to see. So the thing that, that Facebook has done, mm -hmm. they created this launcher, but mm -hmm. the launcher itself isn't what really immersed you, Sean. It's the, it's the lock screen. Yeah, that's what immersed you. Well, that's, that's what got much, you more engaging. But that's pretty much all Facebook Home for the most part is. Like, it's two things. It's the phone, Facebook Home lock screen, which gives you a new launcher and you decides how you navigate, how you start your phone. And they gave you the chat heads, which is really a way to communicate that makes it easier due to the limitations of the lock screen that they no, installed. <laughs> that's my thing. Like, I, I don't know why they. I I would think that if they were to boost up the just the the uh, the, the cover feed. And make it so that it, it's a little bit easier to comment and like and share through the cover feed, and not have this launcher because the launcher, it the launcher that they they're demonstrating right now doesn't bring anything new or better to the table. Now, granted, I know they have a lot of plans for updates for future updates, but this was supposed to be something that they worked on, maybe tirelessly with Android experts and you know and. and trying to get people to, um, you know, 
you know, eat their own dog food, so to speak, and this this was what was passed. Like, I, I can't believe that they would say, oh, yeah, the Facebook launcher with the Facebook apps, let's do that. Like, there, it's missing so much of just the key functionality, not, not just not just Google apps, but just the 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 social aspect of, of, of like the camera or easy access to get into Instagram, um, you know, and some of the key capabilities of Android, which are the widgets. I mean, those key things, they should have come out right out of the gate with um, instead of just their own version of an app drawer because it's not the – you got the launcher. It's you, You're getting a cover, a cover feed to replace your lock screen and an app drawer to replace your home screen, you know. Um, the uh, chat heads, I was really hoping that I would really, really like the chat heads, and I do and I don't, partly because my phone is slow, so the chat heads kind of slows down my phone. Right. Um, second of all, um, when the gentleman on stage was announcing chat heads, they said it would work for Facebook Messenger, SMS, and... I swear he said other chat programs, and it doesn't work with other chat programs like Google Talk or WhatsApp. Nope. Um, does not work with those. And then the other thing too, uh, remember how I said that I was hoping that any any time that I would get a notification of chat heads while I'm playing this particular game, it doesn't. Chat heads will work up until the game starts playing. Like I'll I'll see your little circle on the mm -hmm. screen, and when the game starts playing, the game. Uh, title screen comes on and the chat head bubble goes away. I, I will still hear your notification that you've messaged me, but I have to exit the game, which again defeats the whole purpose. So I don't know if that's Facebook's fault or the game's fault or, or whatever, but that was my whole purpose of, of trying to find a buy-in to use Facebook Messenger that much more. And unfortunately for me, I'm not able to do that at this point. Cool. And then lastly, I mm -hmm. still can't. Um, it, it doesn't let me text message people unless they are on Facebook. And I, I, I thought that it was supposed to allow texting to anybody, and the Facebook Messenger would just be another platform for text messaging, whether they're on Facebook or not, but I'm not able just to type in, uh, I'm not able to search my content, my contacts to, uh, to, uh, to have a conversation whether they have that whether they be a Facebook user or not. So I don't know, maybe that's user error or not, but um, those are just my, I guess, issues, concerns, yeah, well, out outbreaks. Serious issues and serious concerns. Like I said, I, I, you know, personally, I have the problems like the like, the basic stuff for like, like I feel with Facebook, liking posts, sharing posts, getting involved and getting people into that stuff, and then just changing the overall feel of the phone. Like, I don't find myself wanting to use apps anymore. I find myself wanting to see what other people are doing. And that's what the essentially one of the things that they said they wanted to change about how Facebook felt. Like they wanted to make it a people centric phone. They want to do that. Now, don't get me wrong. Trust me. I like after I installed it and I got the stuff going, I was like, yeah, there's no way I could live with this because one, I'm an app centric guy and I have mm -hmm. widgets. I'm big. I'm a big app widget guy. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I'd be able to live with this as a thing. But for what they said, this is what we want to achieve. Without me thinking, did they achieve this? I already started doing it. And I was just doing it, and I'm still doing it right now. I have actually, since this entire conversation started, I have been playing on this entire Facebook. I've been going back and forth and just finding it intriguing just to just see what's going on. Like, I'm seeing my friend who's at base camp right now. Here's a picture of uh, my friend hanging out with Victor Wooten right now. And I'm like, that's awesome. I had no idea that was cool. And then you just look at it. It's a very good picture. You tap it. It's easy to look at the whole picture. And then you swipe it away. You just, it's just the next thing. I see my friend had a problem with the airport. That's jacked up. But there you go. I mean, I don't know. For what you, for getting you involved and maybe think, having you think about Facebook and getting you maybe more into it is definitely something cool. But at the same time, yeah, there's lots of limitations. Like unless you unless this is you are a very limited user and you do certain little things, it's like, or if you're a power user, yeah, there's no way you're going to be kind of like really, you know, jumping on this. But anyway, I'm just you get my point. I'm just I can't wait for the next update. Well, I'm just, that's all I gotta say. They're gonna do an update every month, and all I could think of is when they officially do the next update. Then I'm gonna see what happens, and they're gonna do the next one. Well, it better not just be an update. Bug fixes, like oh, 
screw you guys. Like, update it to include more phones, do the bug fixes, but also, you know, address some of these issues. Put a freaking camera icon right there on the main screen, or let me access the camera from the lock screen. Um, can you answer this question for me, Sean? Mm -hmm. um, if you have a password on your phone, how does that work? Do you know? You're pretty much not making it a password phone. Well, actually, you know what? I haven't tried that, but I just tried this. I just logged out of Facebook, and uh -huh. now I can't do anything because it wants me to log back into Facebook. Like, <laughs> All right, so can you please? So I go back to the home screen, and what does it take me to? The Facebook launcher. All right. But it does not allow me to go back to the TouchWiz unless I go to TouchWiz. I have to manually go to TouchWiz. Right. So they really want you in the Facebook ecosystem. It's just a story oh, yeah, of saying, they're like, we've always heard rumors of a Facebook phone. This this is like when I installed this, my phone ceased being an Android phone and started becoming a Facebook phone that did Facebook. It didn't do everything Facebook did, which, you know, give them time, you know, they'll do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a Facebook phone. It's just a matter if you want a Facebook phone or if you want an Android phone. I want an Android phone, not a Facebook right. phone. Let me put my password back in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Sean. Um... Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to give it. I want to give it my own shot. So maybe when uh, you or Vic come over on Friday, I'll uh, try it out on your phones and mess with it a little bit. So my launcher is called Everything Me, and what it is is a dynamic launcher. So if if you look at your existing Android home screen right now, you have your widgets the way that they're set. You have your apps and the order and folders that that you wanted them to be. So everything is static. It's never going to change unless you move the app yourself or you or you remove it or add new apps to your home pages or, or what have you. There's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you might look at your phone and say, I want to find out more information about this. And unless you are constantly looking up information about the same subject, Sometimes you're not sure what app or what website uh, would best suit your needs to answer that query or answer that question. So um, what everything me uh, does for you is become a more dynamic phone. So um, it's available for free as a beta in the Android, Android App Store, wow, in the, um, in the Google Play. And um, once you download it, it, it goes through the same kind of proce procedure that any any launcher asks you. Do you it asks you, do you want to use the Everything launcher, or if you want to use your your uh, regular Android launcher? So you click on that. Uh, you click on the Everything Me launcher, and right out of the gate, you have your different uh, main folders that they've already kind of uh, pre-created for you. So you have folders like social music, movies. So in your social folder, obviously you have Pinterest, Google+, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, generally, apps that are already downloaded on your phone that are social networks. But underneath that, what you also see once you open up these folders um, are um, other applications. So let's take a look at this. If, if someone were to say on, um, if you were to go onto your launcher and you had some it says what's on your mind and you asked oh breaking bad breaking bad's on my mind and you can either say it using the microphone or you can just type it out and what it does is it dynamically changes the wallpaper to a breaking bad related wallpaper hmm. and then it will give you different web app or web shortcuts to breaking bad related um, content so you have netflix youtube Twitter, Wikipedia. So if you were trying to find out information about a particular actor in Breaking Bad and you're like, well, I, I'm, I'm going to go to IMDb, you click on the IMDb icon and it brings you to the Breaking Bad IMDb webpage right there. So it's, it's all kind of curated specific to uh, whatever query that you're looking into. Same thing goes for food. So if you're looking for pizza, it changes the background to pizza. And then if you're looking for a pizzeria in your area, you can click on Yelp, and it'll show you all the different pizzerias in your area. Like, oh, I want to go to this one. Open table will allow you to do the reservations with it. If you don't like the Yelp options, you have Urban Spoon or, or even Food Spotting. And what's really nice about these is that these are all basically web shortcuts. 
So it, it does bring up your browser. But what it also does, it also introduces you into other applications that you might not necessarily download on your own. Like personally, I wouldn't download food spotting. I think the concept of, uh, of food spotting is, um, is a little silly, even though I do it myself, which is, you know, find food and take pictures of it and, and share it. But... Oh, is that what food spotting is? Well, that, was, that was kind of like one of the first uh, things of food spotting. But now it's also, it, you do rate it. And you, you don't just take a picture of it. You do rate it and, and you get it a little bit more in depth into like the marinara sauce blended very well with, on my palate and this happened, that happened. But, um, but, you know, if I were the coined foodie and I hadn't downloaded food spotting yet and I was introduced to food spotting because of, because of this launcher, I would there uh, there and uh, download it. So, um, so it makes it 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 um it does this dynamic kind of thing where um, it brings the information to you, just makes it easier for you to find out particular um, certain pieces of information. Here's where that coolness kind of ends. Hmm. If you uh, and here's an example of games. If you I want to play games, like okay, well here are the games that are on your phone, and here's a here are more games that you can download or even um, play directly uh, through uh, the HTML5 uh, web app. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Here's where Google Now is awesome, and I'm not going to use anything except Google Now and um, traffic conditions. You just say to Google Now traffic conditions, and as long as you have a good connection and a fast processor, um, it's not only going to give you traffic conditions on a little map that's also going to tell you. Mm -hmm. This is traffic conditions for Vallejo, California. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I wanted. And I didn't even have to uh, click into anything. It's just right there. Mm -hmm. With this, if you were to say traffic conditions, it brings up the Google search, which essentially is Google now. But then it also brings up highway patrol, um, highway federal safety uh, administration, uh, traffic 411, all these different websites pertain to traffic, but it's, it's just so it, it's just so many button clicks and everything. So, um, it, it's in some cases it's user friendly. In some other cases, um, it, it's too it, it's it's immersive, but it, it's not as um, easy to use because you still have to click and scroll into um, to find the information that you're looking for. So um, it's still in beta, so I will give them that. It's still, you know, but it it does have its its cool features. Like I was looking for San Francisco Giants uh, sports inf uh, score information, and um, you know, Google Now will show. Eight. I know, Google Now <laughs> will show you the scores as well as you know they'll show you the not the play by play, but at least the innings. Know, how they were doing throughout the whole innings, um, but sometimes obviously you want some more information. And uh, with everything me, I said San Francisco, San Francisco Giants. It changed the wallpaper to the San Francisco Giants logo. Uh, it brought up my MLB at bat application right away, and it brought up the Wikipedia page and everything, and all the other stuff. Uh, ESPN uh, even brought up my TuneIn Radio because that's how I listen to the game sometimes through TuneIn Radio app. And, um, yeah, it, it was like, oh, I, I want to know about this particular player and all the different apps that would probably best help me find information about this particular player. Obviously, the official website is going to be the best place to find it, and that's the first app. And I click on it, and it just brings up all the player stats and everything. So that right there is, is, is uh, quite handy and uh, because the phone basically – Change the uh, change the information to to better suit me, but there are just some times where um, using f features like Google Now or I guess if they were to make this for iPhone like Siri, sometimes just seeing it in that kind of feed or that kind of card kind of um, option is it would be a little bit easier and better. So, but the one thing that this proves between Facebook Home, everything me. And all the other different launchers that are out there. This is why Android's fun, and this is why Android. You know, uh, you might you might have complaints uh, and issues with it, or or not. You know, I you know we go through ups and downs with Android all the time. 
Um, but the idea that you can completely fully customize your phone to whatever that you want. If you're a complete Facebook fanatic, fine, be that. Get Facebook home. You might love it the way it is right now, and good on you. Um, well, they might love it more and more as they continue getting into it and filling the life of Facebook and yeah. the life of Facebook. And same thing with uh, with this uh, everything me. You know, right now it has some quirks and things that I'm not a big fan of, but I, I can see the um, I, I can see that it could evolve into something that could help people on an everyday basis and and, and make it um, a lot more fun to use the phone. Because sometimes it's 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 um, like a like a like a treasure hunt. You know, like I I want to find out. I want to know more about. Monster drinks. And I'll type in monster drinks into the phone or say monster drinks, and it will come up with recipes using monster drinks. Like, what would I use a, a recipe for monster drinks? So I'll click on the recipe um, web app and it'll show me all the different recipe.com apps that use uh, monster drinks as a part of uh, as a part of the recipes. Now, I knew, I would have never thought of that. That's pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. you take it for what it is. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for uh, hanging out with us. Um, oh, you're welcome. Oh, oh, not me, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, not you. Not this time. <laughs> uh, we are the Lazy Tech Guys. Uh, we have the Wireless Weekly every week on Tuesday nights uh, in and around 10.30 Pacific Standard Time. We hope that you enjoy watching us live or taped or however that you listen to us or uh, read us. Um and there's a tape right there. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. And notice, notice the letters, B-A-S-F. There you go. B-A-S-F. Tech 21. So right. <laughs> right, here is the, um, right here is the Tech 21 uh, retail packaging for their Impact Shield, which, which has the B-A-S-F um, in the second layer. And, uh, yeah, we'll be giving stuff away like that. And then this is the Tech 21 case for the Galaxy S4. It's not even out yet, and I got a case for it. Crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be get, doing a giveaway for those things in, in, the, in the near future. We'll let you guys know more information about that as it comes out. Sean, if you want people to follow you and find you, how would they go about doing that? Many different ways. Uh, Twitter, LTG Sean. You can find my SoundCloud of, uh, account, which is, has a bunch of my music on there, which is under my name, Sean, S C A N Wilburn, W I L B U R N. Um, and you can just email me at Sean at lazytechguys.com or the whole group at comments at lazytechguys.com. Yeah. And for me, the best way to contact me would be through my Twitter account, which is LTG Tony. And text them before two o'clock in the afternoon. That's and please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so LTG Tony is probably the best way to contact me. You can also find more information about me uh, through my about.me slash Team Ninja 3000 page. Um, and then you can contact the whole group uh, at uh, comments at lazytechguys.com. Uh, also, you can call us at 707-722-5299. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Feed, and of course, here on our YouTube channel, Lazy Tech TV, we've got a lot of things coming out going your way too. Um, some uh, other than the giveaways, but that's it for right now. We will be talking to you guys soon. Have a good one and good night. <laughs>